So, we will have the second podcast today about how to enrich our tango. And one of the most important things that we have to take into account is about that the tango is not only a dance. It's music, it's dance, it's a code of behavior, um, it's a way of feeling things, feeling the music, feeling the lyrics, many things that we will talk today. So, I have to tell you first, first of all, I have it in the script here. So, hello, I already said. So, about the subscription, remember this podcast, even if it's in Facebook, Facebook streaming, Facebook live, the podcast will, it's, it's a part of a, of a channel. That channel is the Tango for All YouTube channel. So we will have every Friday at uh, this, this hour, we will have the podcast every week about the topic. I would like, uh, of course, I would like you to remember, Halina, how are you? Lai, how are you? So we can start. Um, I would like to tell you that these topics that we will talk today are just uh, based on my experience. They are my concepts, so I don't want to argue or make some controversy about the topic, how to enrich our tango. Important thing that we have to talk is that I have many, I have many students that they ask me, or friends that they ask me, for example, or organizers too, that they ask me about levels. What do I think about the levels of tango? This is a beginner, this is an intermediate, this is an advanced. It's an important topic because I've seen uh, since I'm abroad, Argentina, many people talk about this kind of, of things, for example. This guy is an advanced, this guy is a beginner, this guy is an intermediate. I would like to tell you um, things that can help us to improve a good dancing, to be a good dancer or a good tanguero, if we may. So one of the things, the first of the things that I consider that, that help uh, is that the, this person, this dancer, for example, I consider that it's very, very important that the dancer has to be uh, it has to have a commitment with tango, with his own or her own tango. I'm not saying that, I don't want to think that if that guy doesn't dance um, traditional or, or whatever the style, um, he's not a good dancer because I, I don't think that is, it works that way. People, some of you know me personally, and you know that, I, that I, I have a style to dance. And I know that you all have a style. Everyone has a style that uh, matches perfect or, or will match perfect. Maybe it's a process uh, with what you feel about tango. Something that is very important in, in to, to let it clear from the beginning of this podcast is that to me, it doesn't matter what, what's the style. It can be tango nuevo, for example. It can be tango uh, milonguero, it can be tango salon, it can be canchengue or whatever the style. The important is the commitment. The important is that uh, that person should have the, the compromise to improve, to explore things to have experiences, internal experiences with, uh, with that tango that uh, this dancer have chosen. So first, it doesn't matter the style. Second, it has to be a, a true style from that person. It has to come from 
a dialogue between that person and the music that is sounding. It doesn't matter which kind of music, because maybe to me Donato is not a good tango, but maybe for another one Pugliese is not a good tango. So it doesn't matter which kind of music, because everyone will have a, our own experience, for example. We will have our own experience with the tango. Why is that? Because one of the important things that we always say in tango is that we have to dance our past. So what is dancing our past? Tango is a dialogue. First, it's a dialogue between the music and us. After that, we can share that with someone else, with a partner. But first, it's a dialogue between the tango and, and us. So the way that we interact with that tango What kind of things, what kind of experiences, what kind of emotions we have inside. Otherwise we are doing just a sport, or we are doing a choreography, or we are doing different things that are not tango in my, in my opinion, for example. If you don't have that commitment, if you don't have that compromise, internal compromise with the tango that you are dancing by that moment, maybe you are doing something else. I don't know what it is. But it's not my tango, what you are, done, what you are doing. So, another important thing that we have to understand is that once that we start approaching to someone and having the experience to communicate with someone, listening to someone. We have to feel that passion, that eager to go, to improve, to explore things. It's not only to move, and that's okay, so I've been in two or three classes, so I have the technique enough, so I can move, I can go to a milonga. I think that's, the, that, that's not enough. In my opinion, it would be important to... For being a good dancer means one of the things is that you, you need, one of the requirements, is that you need to want to go even further. Another thing is about what we can do as dancers. So what I think is that uh, when I see someone, uh, when I want to imagine someone that is a good dancer, for example, or as many people say, an advanced dancer, what is a good dancer? To me, a good dancer is someone who has all the things that we have talked before, and we have a very um, wide amount of resources, of, of technical resources. But no, I don't mean technical as a technique. I mean one person who can, in a very short, short space, he or she can manage to do different things, with quality, of course. That means the manage of the space, the manage of the variety, of those resources, that means that person is a, is a good dancer. Someone who is not a good dancer is always doing the same. In a different space, is doing the same. In a, in a small space, is trying to do exactly the same things, exactly the same sequences, or the same dynamics of the moment that it was in a very wide space. Which means that dancer doesn't have an, a good management of the space. Which means 
that that dancer maybe doesn't have enough resources to manage different kind of spaces. So we have another mm. another um, point that is the resources in short space. I've seen many times dancers whom are considered advanced, for example, or maybe teachers, or maybe famous guys, for example, that in a very short space, they cannot improvise. They do the same sequence as before, or exactly the same movement without taking, taking into account the, the space, without taking account what is sounding. So that's another topic that we can talk about the music. How important is the musical resource that, that that dancer has to have? To me, it is it is very important. It's one of the topics that they are very, very important. Privet in esa Tikak. So, we just started here. We are talking about some of the things that are important, at least in my opinion, for someone to be a good dancer. And we are in the music resources. Which, which things this dancer is listening? Is always listening to the rhythm, for example. That's not a good dancer, in my opinion. That's the beginner. The beginner will do always the rhythmical things. I've heard many masters in, in Buenos Aires saying exactly the same. Don't dance the rhythm, don't dance the rhythm, don't dance the rhythm. And I've seen, for example, Shippo. How are you? Um, I've seen many times, for example, dancers that they are doing all the time the rhythmical stuff. Or another kind of dancers that they are doing, for example, just the violin. Absolutely predictable to dance the violin. Absolutely predictable. When the violin sounds, we can have an army of thousand, thousand dancers worldwide that they do en rosque with lapis. So a violin is sounding automatically en rosque with lapis. That's not musicality for me. We can talk about what is musicality in the future. That's another topic that we will talk. Misha. <laughs> Quiero canchenguear con vos. <laughs> Misha, privet. Tikak. Eh, Michael Natochi. Fantastic dancer, guys. Um, so, we were talking about what kind of musical resources a good dancer has to have, for example, not only to have the, the, the skill to, to dance the rhythm, the melody, but not always the melody, because if, if all the time that dancer is dancing the melody, and in that phrase is important the rhythm, or in that phrase is important <clears throat> um, the counterbass, so maybe that guy is not listening too well. Because in music, some of you know that I'm a musician too, so I know how the music is composed, and uh, the composer wants always to give you a message, to send you, is preparing the, the rails, the road for you to, to walk, to walk and to feel good. The composer is always like a guy who wants you to to go for a, go through a sunny road with the sun and the trees and something like that. The composer wants you to enjoy, mostly, unless you are listening to Schoenberg. 
If you are not listening to Schoenberg or one of his students, probably the composer would like you to enjoy. So, by the moment that the composer is playing the counterbass, is raising the volume of the counterbass, it means that maybe the melody is not important exactly in that moment. So, that's one of the resources that we, we should talk more in the future. Lie. And how important is it to understand the lyrics? Ah, it's what a topic to talk about. We will have a controversy here. It is important, really. It is important, of course. Um, it's not the most important thing, but, but it will help. Why is that? Because there were dance dancers in the past, milongueros in the past, that they should... No, they, they, they were dancing all the instrumentals only. Some dancers, they didn't want to dance the, the um, tangos that they were with the singer. They just wanted to, to sit, they just wanted to, not having the mate in the milonga, but they wanted the wine or the whiskey. But it will help. It will help to, to know about the lyrics because the lyrics are different depending on the style of tango the area. So believe me, it will help. We will talk about that. It's one of the topics that I have that I have script here for future for future meetings. About the lyrics, about the areas, the geography, migration, those kind of things. We will talk about those kind of things. Remember guys that in this channel, in Tango for All, um, if you subscribe we will have different playlists. One, one playlist is about this podcast. This kind of podcast will be every week posted. One other playlist is about tutorials. Um, one other is uh, about documentaries of tango and I will comment about them for people that they are not from my city, that they want to, they are interested. Um, about the subtitles things with some friends so maybe we can manage because the translation is important for the most of the people that they can uh, more amount of people the better so another thing that is important is that we will have uh, training sessions like short training sessions and comparison between the technique from sports and tango because many things can be explained in the mechanic of, of the technique in, in tango can be explained in a more proper way from the sports, for example. So, we were talking about the music. As part of the um, requirements to be a good dancer. Um, another thing is to know about the orchestras, because we were talking about the music. To know about the orchestras, that's important. Which kind of orchestras should come? If, for example, if the DJ is good, if the DJ is good, the DJ will play in the night, it will, it will manage, he will manage or she will manage to play um, with a style that it will get the best dancers to, to dance without uh, being tired in the first hour or without being bored in six hours. So it will find, the DJ will find the balance. So if the DJ is good, the good dancer will know which orchestra will come, which kind of orchestras, as we were talking the, in the first tutorial last week, which kind of orchestras will have already passed and which kind of orchestras will come. The good dancer should know that. Now it is sounding, for example, now is this early. 
So, if the tanda who is coming is tango, he should know what should come. So he will prepare. He will prepare the tanda, he will prepare the partner. It's not that he will send a message on WhatsApp. He will not send a message on WhatsApp, please dance with me the next tanda. No. But he will make the girl or the partner, he will make the partner to see him or to see her. Okay, I'm here. Probably I will dance with you in the future, but I'm here. So the preparation of the, of the cabeceo will be. Another thing that, it sh that the good dancer should know is about the space. It's a very important topic. About the navigation. The good dancer should know how to navigate. But what is a good navigation? For example, because many people think that a good navigation, it means to go, to walk and to go further. That's not to have a good navigation. I can have a good navigation without walking at all. Walking all the time, there are people that they, there are people that walk all the time. Four steps. Five, six, seven, eight. Walk to go somewhere. To go where? Where do you want to go? That's not dancing anyway, in my opinion. That's walking. It is beautiful to, to walk in tango. Yes, it is. But it's not the only thing that you can... If you don't walk, you don't dance tango. No, I don't... It's not my opinion that. Uh, what we should do is to to know that there are some some situations that we will have in different geo geographies. If we, for example, if we are dancing, we will have the corner there. So there are. If I have the corner, there are some sequences or some movements that I cannot do. If I have one line that is in this side, there are many things that I cannot do to this side. It's logical. Those kind of things means a good navigation, for example. Where to do a lapis, where to do a hero. Is it the same to do a hero for this side or, or to the other side? No, it's not the same. A good dancer should know, for example, how is the level of the dancer that is behind me? Is he good? Is he managing the space? Is he crashing the tables all the time? How is the level of the dancer that is in front of me, for example? Is he a good dancer? Can he manage the space? A good dancer should know that. A good dancer, when he or she goes with the first step into the floor, a good dancer should know where is the best dancer or where is a really good one. If you find a really good one, you will go behind him. Because you will know that that guy, if he's a good dancer, he will not go backwards, for example. He will not cross the lines. He will not do a half a hero with a lapis in the direction that you are dancing. Those kind of things are codes. Can I do an ocho, ocho back? Can I, can I send to my partner to an ocho back in this direction? Of course not. I can't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Why is that? Any step that I do, if I'm in one of the lines and we are all going forward, any time 
that I go to one side, I will crush someone. I will crush someone. So, again, a good dancer should know those kind of things. A good follower, for example, should know how is the situation where, where, where she is, for example, or he. I have other dancers that they are close to me. How close they are? They are far. I can do, can I do a planeo or I can't? Can I do a gancho? A, a good follower should know that there are no ganchos in a milonga. Ganchos are for performance. A good dancer should know that. Why is that? Because many people will say, ah, no, but I want to, I want to make a, I want to make a gancho. My teacher taught me, I have made, I have taken 20 private lessons of ganchos and I want to use them in the milonga and I have space. Many, many followers will say that. But there is something that you don't know. My little follower. You don't know the geography. You don't know if someone is going in your direction at, behind you. You don't know that. The leader knows that, not you. So, okay, yes, you can feel free and do a gancho or something. But you will crush someone because you don't know who is coming, what happens, for example, if the couple that is behind you is going one step in your direction. You don't know that because you cannot see. So you shouldn't do a gancho by yourself without leading. You shouldn't do a planeo for something in Milonga. The planeo is, is not a movement, a technical gesture, we can say, for a milonga. Planeo is for performance. A good dancer, a good follower will know, will know that. A good leader will know never to lead a gancho or a planeo in short space. A good leader will know that it's not the same to lead a wider, a wider uh, movement for the lady in this side or in the other side. Those are codes. A good dancer will know what happens if the, if the couple that is exactly forward is going all the time backwards. A good leader will know what to do. So many times where, when uh, friends or students or organizers, they ask me, for example, in my, in my travels, they ask me, oh, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Or what do you think about him? Or what do you think about her? These are at least um, my criteria to some of my criteria, which can, which can allow us to, to improve our, our level of dancing, to improve our commitment, to improve our level of perception of dance, to pay attention to these kind of things. Pay attention to the space, pay attention to the timing of the, of the figures, of the sequences, to pay attention of the orchestras, for example, to pay attention that um, some sequences are good to, to do in this side, but they are not good to do on the other side. A good dancer should know, for example, uh, that he or she should try if, if the, the leader is the, the guy, the, 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 the leader is who is deciding uh, the space, okay? So, we can say, for example, 
I want to go there. I will, I will start. I will go to the followers table and we will start and we will go in one, one step in the going in the direction of the floor. Okay, so and I've seen, for example, in in water science many, 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 many times, and I I I was talked about about this concept is that always try to wait until a good dancer ap approaches to go behind that good dancer always because the good dancer will never do a step back. That's one of the measures, that's one of the things that I see in the floor. And I've seen many professionals or famous guys or whatever, and these guys, they do a step backwards. They dance the same if it's a Troilo or it's Disarli or it's Donato, everything is the same because Many dancers, they have like programmed the, the sequences and it's the same. Maybe a silence is in the music, but this dancer is, is kicking, is doing something. Maybe it's walking when a situation is not a walking in the, in the music. You know, in the music, it's very, very easy to find out where, to, when exactly to walk. In the music, it's so easy. If the composer wants you to walk, he will give you something, something special, some special kind of sound, some special way to, to play that instrument. That's obvious for the composer that is like a march, like a going forward. For the dancer, that's a walking. Don't worry, we will talk about that. Tijon, Privet, Toje. Tijon Tagunov. What about Engancho? Engancho, that doesn't exist. What you have is or Enganche or Gancho. I would like to know which of these things are you referring to. Anyway, both in a milonga should not exist. Another thing that is important to know about uh, what, are, what kind of things we have to pay attention to improve our dance is to have a good cabeceo. You know, the, the cabeceo, uh, Everyone thinks that, uh, okay, I know what is cabeceo. Cabeceo is to look at the woman and to do like this, and that's it. No, it's not. I'm sorry, guys, but that's not a cabeceo. Cabeceo starts before. Cabeceo starts, needs a preparation. The cabeceo needs Both of the of the it's like a, it's like theater, the cabeceo. It's like theater. You have to make the other person to know that you are there. When you go to a milonga and you a good dancer should know with who will dance in the, in a dance. When you arrive to a milonga and you see, ah okay. She's there, she's there, ah, okay, fantastic, I have fantastic tanda here, I have fantastic tanda here, I have fantastic tanda, okay. You should know by the moment that arrives to Milonga. So, the cabeceo is, it's an invitation, but it's an invitation which comes after after a perfect timing. This cabeceo, it's a process of many, it's a dialogue. Hmm? The cabeceo is not the act of just doing like this and that's it. 
for the entire, the, the full cabeceo ceremony, we need, I'm checking, I'm checking the messages here. So, we need many things, for example. We need the lady to, to look at the guy. We need the guy exactly in that moment to exactly in that timing to look at the lady. We need a full contact with the eyes and to wait. It's not immediately. It should not be immediately. I'm not looking to someone and automatically I, I do the cabeceo. It's not like that. It shouldn't work like that. That's not good quality of cabeceo. A good cabeceo needs time. So you look at someone. For example, I'm like this. I'm looking to other place. Then I look at that lady and I wait until that lady looks at me or vice versa. It's the same. So then I will see in her eyes that she wants to dance with me. And then if I can have that impression that she wants to dance with me, because she has to tell me with her eyes, please invite me, please invite me, invite me, invite me, invite me. With her eyes, she will tell me that. A good cabeceo is that, that the lady is looking at the man, like eating the man. Like trying to, okay, I want to hug that man for this tanda. Troilo comes, okay, I, I have to look for that guy that I saw before and I want to dance with him, so I will look at him. Invite me, invite me, invite me. And the man will perceive that. So then, when our, when our eyes are crossed, exactly, are crossing path, I will invite the lady that it can be like this, it can be like this, it can be different ways. Doesn't mean that I have to, uh, I have to do it with the head like this, big. No, it's not like that. And, Another thing that is important is that then the I wait for the lady to come and to, to uh, not to come to me. I wait for the lady for me to come. So I cabeceo, I invite the lady, the lady say yes, maybe the lady say no, but let's suppose the lady say yes. I will wait a little bit and then I will start walking in her direction. When I go in, in her direction, I have to look at her all the time because maybe the lady said yes to the guy that was at my side or the guy that was behind me. That happens many, many times. I've seen that in festivals, in marathons, in big milongas, happens many times. So we have to, for complete cabeceo, we should have the confirmation of that cabeceo. Confirmation. She said yes, or, or I think that she said yes, so I have to look at her. I go up, I start walking, but I have to look at her. Maybe she's not looking at me. If the girl is not looking at me, she's not a good cabeceo girl, we can say. A good cabeceo means that the lady will follow me with her eyes until I'm in front of her table. And then we will go to dance. So that's another thing. We can talk more about the cabeceo in, in the future. Another topic that we should talk about is about the history that a good dancer should know about history of tango, should know about the, the styles, for example. I'm not saying that a good dancer should 
should read all the books. I'm not saying that. Pat, how are you? Glad to see you, Pat, from Brussels. Glad to see you, man. Um, I'm not saying that uh, you, you have to read an entire encyclopedia of tango, or you have to read about tango, and then you will be, when you memorize about history, some chapters of some books, you will be automatically, you will be an, uh, an advanced dancer. No, I'm not saying that. It doesn't work like that. It's not so easy. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that at least, at, we, at least, it's good that we, if we are interested on the history of tango. What is the history of tango? To know something about the characteristics of the culture. In, in Buenos Aires. Why is that? Because for us, for porteños, for people that we have, we were born and raised in the city, for us, uh, tango is a culture. It's not a dance for us. We can understand that for people that they are from outside Buenos Aires or outside Argentina, you have relation with tango first as a dance. But you can go further and find out that the music is very, very important. For us, it's very, very important. The lyrics, as Laia asked in the, in the beginning of this conversation, no, it's not a conversation because I'm talking alone here, because you are not asking enough this time. Last week, we had many people talking, writing all the time. You are silent today. So what I'm saying is that it is important for you if you can swim through tango. Music, the lyrics, if you want, the history, to know about the not only the codes, the navigation, those kind of things make, make tango a different experience than other things. A different experience from salsa, from bachata, from kizomba, from tennis, from football, from, from many things. Tango is different. Why is different? Because of these kind of things. So, if you can enjoy these kind of things, the exploration of these kind of things, the music, the codes, it doesn't matter, remember, it doesn't matter the style that you are dancing. It doesn't matter, really. Which matters is if you have the commitment. If you really want to go further, it doesn't matter if you want to do a gancho, for example. Maybe you want to do that gancho that Tijon, Tijon Tagunov was asking about. Maybe you want to do that gancho. Okay, but you have to be aware of exactly when to do that gancho. It is, a, is it a, a crowded milonga? So forget about the gancho. Is it um, a crowded milonga? Forget about the planeo. For the leaders. Is it a really crowded milonga? Forget about doing turns with lapis to your left. Forget about that. Those are part of the codes. Codes of navigation. If you like, if you enjoy, to know about these kind of things. Um, you will be dancing better. You will be more respectful with the others. You will enjoy more the music. You will enjoy more to wait for that partner that you really wanted. And tango will not be just a, a mechanical dance for you. Or tango will not be a sport for you. Or tango will not be 
uh, just a social place to hang out with friends. You will be dancing tango in a different way. If you are one of those, um, it's just a matter of time. If you enjoy these kind of things, you will get into a moment that you will be a good dancer. It's just a matter of time. But it's time with quality. You don't need to be a world champion of ballet or ballroom or tennis or chess. You don't need. What you need is to enjoy the music, as we said before, the code, to be eager to uh, find the, the a good, good questions, not the answers, good questions of what, what you want to express. Um, you have to want to, to share what you, what you have with someone and you will be a good dancer. That's a topic of today, how to enrich our tango, how to enrich our tango to find out these kind of things. First, to, to know what kind of things I can give to the other person, what kind of things I have uh, to express, what kind of things I can, I can melt with the tango that is sounding. How, uh, how similar is this kind of music, for example, with uh, what I have inside? If it's similar, if it matched, it means that you are inside already. You are swimming inside tango. If you don't, if it's the same for you to... I met many people that it's the same for them. I have friends that it's the same. They dance tango, but it's, it's the same. Pecho Boys, Darienzo, it's the same. So, in my criteria, even if they are my friends, for example, uh, they can be good dancers in general. But that doesn't mean to be a good tango dancer or a good tanguero, you can say. To be a good tanguero is to pay attention or to try to take all the things that we were talking in this hour. All those things will make you a good tanguero or tanguera, for example. To be uh, trustful with yourself, with the tango that you are dancing. Pay attention to the tango that is sounding. Pay attention. Don't move because you just want to move and, and spread your energy and that's it. It's not a matter of energy. It's not, tango is not a matter of movement. It's a matter of communication. So, I would like to see your comments and I will answer. So I will give you some seconds. Remember guys, remember to subscribe to our channel. Remember every Friday at 9 p.m. Spanish time we will have this podcast in here and I will repost it. I will post it on, on the channel, Tango for All channel, on Saturdays. So the topics, normally the topics that we will talk about are the, the things that people are asking or people are commenting in social media, for example. If you have one topic that you would like to, you would like me to talk about, um, please write. Write in the comments below. For example, I would like Alejandro. You can talk about uh, what do you think about this kind of? Uh, I don't know the marathons, what do you think about the festivals, what do you think about the uh, milonga should be bigger, should be longer in time, 
what to think about uh, what happens if I do this kind of sequence or what happens. You can ask me anything you, you like and we can talk about that. The important thing is that we can share all the thoughts that we have and we will have this podcast every Friday. So Pat, you are saying here, I have a good question for you, but for me, I know the answer already. So if you know, Pat, if you know the answer already, why you will ask? My friend, ask me anyway. I will try to be the more original as possible and I will try to contradict your, your answer. <laughs> Remember to find, uh, to find the channel on YouTube, Tango for All, Tanga Chitri Sio, in Russian. Uh, Tango Cuatro Al. <laughs> In, in Spanish and we will we will have some mates together every Friday and every Tuesday we will have the every week we will have the new tutorials yes every Tuesday it's a philosophical <laughs> maybe every Tuesday so but you are asking here how do you know when you danced in a very good way, when you danced good? How, how do you know? Um, <coughs> you, you, you said that you have the answer for that. So you can... Uh, um, You can tell us what do you think that is to uh, when is a good dance. I don't. Um, in my opinion, the, there is no way to to say when you dance and you say, "Oh, I." Your your question is when you danced in a very good way. I think that. Um, the only way that is important and it's possible to know is if you can, uh, if you felt that between those four tangos you had um, a precise and sensitive, empathic dialogue with the partner. That means uh, for me that you had a good dance. If you both could match, if you and your and your partner could match, I don't mean match because you dance in close embrace. No, it's not only that. You will see that. You will feel that in the pauses. You will feel that. When you walk, you will feel that in the ochos, how the lady moves, you will feel that. Or how the follower moves. She will feel if you are being empathic with her, if you are waiting for her, if you are taking care of her. She will feel that and she will be grateful. She will thank you that. If you had um, this kind of experience so that's the answer you had you had a good tanda so you danced good uh, you are saying here okay that's uh, that's the, the the meaning for me of dancing I'm looking for that when I when I invite someone to dance with uh, that's what I that's what I want that's what I'm looking for for that, that dialogue. Um, that's why it, it is important to choose very carefully with who uh, you want to dance. You want to dance with someone, and we are coming back to the topic of today, how to enrich our tango. The way to enrich our tango is to have better en ingredients, flavors, Good music, good, good management of space, good technique, blah, 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 blah. And 
a good partner too. Good partner for me, for that orchestra, for that moment. It's not the same to dance with someone, uh, the Troilo, to dance the D'Arienzo, to dance the De Mare, to dance Gobi. It's not the same. It's not the same to dance at the beginning when you just arrive than at the end of the milonga. It's not the same. It's not the same dancing on Friday than Saturday, da, uh, dancing on Saturdays. It's not the same. If you are if you are in an event, for example, it's not the same. So those kind of things, if if we if we have this motivation to explore, to be, as I said before, to be swimming. In the waters of, of tango, it's it's important for us to the, um, the will to enjoy these kind of things, to enjoy these differences, to choose a good mar- partner because I feel in this way today. I want to ex- express something and I want to have this, to, to share this dialogue or these emotions or this whatever I want to share, with that person in this music today. That's the perfect moment. And if we match, that's why the tango is so, so, it's a precious, um, it's a very, very like a, it's like a, um, how can I say it? It's, it's, it's like gold. It's like a little gold that we have because when you have all those things, in 15 minutes, you have a perfect moment. That's the tango. Tango is not only the dance. No. It's dancing with, in this kind of situation, with a real partner for you, in the perfect moment, the perfect music. This kind of thing. That's why uh, it doesn't happen all the time, every night. You don't have a perfect tanda uh, every night. Maybe you don't have every night. Maybe you will have it tomorrow. Maybe you will have it next month. That's something that will help us to, to um, appreciate a good tanda. So, dear friends, thank you very much for sharing this hour uh, with me um, and see you next Friday. Remember to subscribe Tango for All on YouTube and you will have the notifications and you will have the weekly tutorials, weekly, weekly tutorials um, and podcasts on Fridays. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye.